this master Jesus is one that has master Jesus. We are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that thing. His master Jesus is one that has that master Jesus. We are going to receive a favor today that will last you a lifetime. You must be born again. You must be born again. There is somebody that has that thing. This master Jesus is one that has that master key. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I want to welcome all of us into this wonderful uh service tonight this is march holy ghost service and i want to welcome everyone into this meeting i want us to know that the holy spirit has a word for us this hour the spirit of god is here uh with us in this platform uh and I believe that every one of us that is here get ready for testimonies. Because anywhere you find the Holy Spirit, you find testimony. Tonight, the Lord has said is going to be a night of many testimony, including your own testimony. I don't know what test you have that you are going through right now, the Lord is about to turn it to testimony. And that is why I wanted to share this uh, message with uh, your friend, share this page with somebody because the Lord wants to do something very great tonight. There's somebody that the Lord is going to give testimony tonight. There shall be testimony of healings. There shall be testimony of deliverances. There shall be testimony of interventions, testimony of overturning whatever the enemy is up to in your life. He said, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God will lift the standard. So I want to welcome all of us into this wonderful uh, Holy Spirit service. This is the March edition. And I know, please, as you come with expectation, come expecting what the Lord will do for you. This is a need meeting service. But the moment you can avail yourself, you can make yourself available for the Holy Spirit, then you are pushing yourself for testimony. If you make yourself available, for the Holy Spirit, you have positioned yourself for testimony. Every one of you that is listening to us tonight, I pray for you that you are going to have encounter with God's healing power. You are going to have encounter with God's delivering hand in the name of Jesus. The hand of God's deliverance will break forth in your life. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you today that the hand of the Lord will be stretched forth in your direction and you are going to live this service better than you came. If you are sick, you have someone that is sick, please call them to come because the mighty works of God's wisdom is about to be released. Remember, when Jesus was in his city, in Nazareth, in Mark 6, verse 2, he said, where has this man, this wisdom and this mighty works, wherever the wisdom of God is, in that place, there is mighty works. I welcome you to a service of mighty works today. The way the Holy Spirit did mighty works in Genesis, the way the Holy Ghost moved and brought mighty works, I see him bringing mighty works in your life where you are right now. 
I see the Lord doing, bringing mighty works to bear the work of turning any present chaos into beauty. I see that being done, the force of creation, because the Holy Spirit is the architect of creation. I was saying this place of the Holy Ghost, I was talking to one of us uh, about, which I said also yesterday, that the Holy Spirit is so essential to the Godhead that that was the first thing that is wisdom is so essential to the Godhead. That was the first thing God created. Please know what I said again. Wisdom is the first thing God created. Wisdom is the first thing God created. Amen. I'm young, I'm seeing a testimony from one of our sister, Sister Rachel McFarlane, that we prayed for last Friday regarding the husband, that the husband has been released from the hospital, is in hospices trying to release him uh, a little while. Thank you for that testimony. I will start sharing this testimony. Glory be to God for this testimony. Uh, is out of COVID, out of where he was, just get about to be released finally. I want to thank God for that testimony. That testimony right there. Our sister was sharing that testimony. Last Friday, we prayed uh, together by faith with all of us on this line concerning the husband of our sister. And Sister Rachel McFarlane and God answered our, our prayers. And he was out of COVID world to a normal world now. It's about to be released. We give glory to God for that wonderful testimony that we are hearing. Sister Rachel, as the Lord has begun the work for your husband, so will the Lord perfect every healing in his body, every 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 every, every uh, multiple um, multiple challenges that he has is going to receive God's healing touch. When God starts eating, he finishes it. So we thank God for that healing testimony. It shall be permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. So I want us to pray right now. We'll be praying, every one of us, we'll be praying for uh, 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 for what the Lord is said to do uh, this evening. Let's pray. Father, thank you for uh, everyone that is here on this platform. Thank you for what you are said to do. Thank you for what you are doing right now in the life of everyone that's listening to this broadcast. Thank you, Lord, for healings. Thank you for what you have done, Father. Thank you for what you have done for your daughter, Sister Rachel, and the family. Thank you because you broke the appointment of death over the husband. We thank you for doing this. Thank you for answering our prayers. Thank you because that's how you are going to answer the prayer of every other person that is crying unto you. Anyone having COVID-19 infection, thank you because you that healed the husband of our sister, you will heal them right now in Jesus' name. We pray for healing right now. You send forth your word and your word healed and deliver from destruction. We pray for everyone on this line. You are delivered from destruction. You are delivered from your destruction. Anything out to destroy you, we command by the power of God that that thing is destroyed, dismantled in the name of Jesus Christ. He said when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God will lift a standard. We pray right now by the power of the Holy Ghost will lift a standard against every satanic activity in the life of everyone listening tonight. In the name of Jesus, we'll lift up the standard of the Holy Ghost against every agenda, against every evil work of the wicked in anybody's life right now. Receive God's healing touch in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We are talking about the uncommon flow of the Holy Spirit, uncommon wisdom of the Spirit of God, uncommon wisdom of the Spirit of God, the relationship between the Holy Spirit and the wisdom of God. Now, like I said, that the wisdom of God is so important that it was the first thing God created to let you know 
the wisdom of God is that valuable, is that important. And that is why this wisdom is a spirit. And in Proverbs chapter eight, Proverbs chapter eight, Proverbs chapter eight, 22. Hear what the Bible says here. The message, the message Bible. The message Bible says, God sovereignly made me first the basic before he did anything else. I was brought into being a long time before the art got a start. Hear that. Wisdom said, God made me first. So before God made the heaven and the earth, he made wisdom first. So wisdom is not a physical force, it's a spiritual force. Wisdom is a spirit. And we need that spirit of wisdom. If God had to create it first, that means it, is, it was meant to play a principal role in the work of creation. So if God needed that wisdom, the spirit of wisdom, which is the spirit of creativity in the face of stagnation, how much more me and you need that spirit? We need that architectural spirit. We need the architect of the spirit of God. Let me say to you that the Holy Ghost is essentially the wisdom of God. And that is why today I pray for you. We saw the exploit of wisdom in the creation. The Bible says God made the heaven and the earth. Before God made the heaven and the earth, the first thing God made was wisdom. God made wisdom first, the spirit of wisdom first. And that's why we are going for wisdom first in this season. We are going for wisdom first in this hour. We are seeking God's wisdom, that that spirit, that spirit of wisdom, that architectural spirit, that problem solving spirit, that directing spirit, that spirit that was at work in God, that was at work with God, that was at work in Adam in the garden, that spirit that was at work in men of old was work. That same spirit is coming for you today in Jesus' name. I prophesy to you that the spirit of wisdom will come upon your life in the name of Jesus, the creative force of the wisdom of God will find its way into your life. Essentially, that spirit is the Holy Spirit. That spirit is the Holy Spirit. I wanted to know the Holy Ghost to us. What the Holy Ghost is to us today was what Jesus was to the 12 disciples. What Jesus was to the salvation, to your salvation, is what the Holy Ghost to your prayer life. Understand the book of Revelation, call him the spirit of life. Jesus called him the spirit of truth. Paul, in the book of Ephesians, called the Holy Ghost the spirit of wisdom. In Isaiah 11, one to two, they call him the spirit of knowledge and wisdom. And the Romans chapter eight, they call him the spirit of adoption. Is one that adopted into the family of God. In the book of first Corinthians chapter nine, verse 10. Chapter nine, verse 10, he said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither enter the heart of any man what God has in store for those that love him. He has the inventory of all the gifts of the Father planted, that is the Holy Ghost as the inventory of all the gifts planted by the Father in all humans. Hear me very well. The Holy Ghost, the same Spirit, He has the inventory of all the giftings that planted by the Father in all human. In First Corinthians chapter twelve, the Bible says, "It decide whether you get two or three gifts." In Exodus chapter thirty-five. We saw the Holy Ghost was one that gave Bezalia his craftsman ability, all your skills, all the musical skill, all the gifting, all the craftsmanship. They are all offshoot 
of the Holy Spirit. All these things, they are planted by the gift of the Father in us, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that is why I have come to talk to you today about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is essentially the spirit of wisdom. The Holy Spirit is not just a thing. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Ghost is a person. And I see him working in your affairs today. The Holy Spirit is not just the presence, is the person with the presence of God. The Holy Ghost is not fire, it burns like fire. The Holy Ghost is not water, the Holy Ghost washes like water. The aroma is not the food, the backing of the dog is not the dog. The Holy Ghost is a person. The person of the Holy Ghost is the person of wisdom. The person of the Holy Spirit is the person of wisdom. And that is why I'm saying to us today in the book of First Psalm 16, verse 11, it says the part of the just is, it, it was saying here, thou shall show me the part of life in your presence, fullness of joy is absent. The proof of his absence in your life is depression. When you are depressed, it's because the Holy Ghost is not there. That is why he said, you show me the path of life in your presence is the fullness of joy. So it means to me the presence of the Holy Spirit brings joy. His absence brings depression. The proof of his presence in your life is joy. What are we saying? The Holy Spirit, the Bible call him, is the one that is set beside you. He said in Psalm 16, verse Verse 8, I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Psalm 16, verse 8. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. The Holy Ghost is not just in you. The Holy Ghost is the one that walk alongside with you. They call him the paraclete. The one that walk alongside with you. The one that take your right hand to take you to where you should go. The Holy Ghost is taking you today to where you should go. The Holy Ghost is taking you today to where you should go. The Holy Spirit is at your right hand. If you are born again, please understand. If you have the Holy Spirit, you are not alone. He is at your right hand. He said that I have said the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Yes, I know a lot of things are happening right now across the globe that will make anybody in nature to be moved. But turn to the Holy Ghost on your right side. The Holy Ghost is a person. The Holy Ghost is not power. a operates with power. The Holy Ghost is not just a presence. It's the person with the presence. The Holy Ghost is a person. I want us to engage with him. What, what Peter did not become walking next to Jesus in three and a half years, Peter became in one day with the Holy Spirit. What Peter did not become in three and a half years walking next to Jesus, it became in one day with the Holy Ghost. And that is why we need this Holy Spirit. You need him because he is the wisdom of God. He is the wisdom of God. And that is why I want to say to many of us here, the Holy Spirit is not the wind, a move like winds. And that is why I pray for somebody today that you have encounter with the person of the Holy Spirit. When you encounter Jesus, what you are going to see, it is his Holy Spirit. The obsession of Jesus is that all of us should hear the voice of the Spirit in the book of Revelation. The thing Jesus was talking about throughout in the book of Revelation, he kept saying, let him that has an ear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. That is 
the book of Revelation chapter 3, from verse 13, Revelation 3, verse 13, let him that has an ear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, the obsession of Jesus is that we should hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that is why I am saying here to many of us that the presence of God is not just an influence, he is a person. You can talk with him. The Holy Spirit thinks, the Holy Spirit talks, the Holy Spirit can feel. That's what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, from verse 28 to 31. It says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Grieve him. Don't grieve him. Don't grieve the Holy Ghost because he has a feeling. He can feel. He can be offended. He can, he can, he can, he can, he can laugh. He can smile. He can be hot. So that is why the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Ghost. Because if you grieve the Holy Spirit, it will leave. That is Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. When you grieve the Holy Spirit, it leaves. And it may not come back until you acknowledge your sin. That is Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. It says, when it's offended, it withdraws. But I have good news for you. I pray for you today. You will not offend the Holy Spirit. I pray for you. You will not offend the person of the Holy Spirit in your life. You will not offend him. And that is why I'm trying to tell you that the Spirit of God is not an influence. It's not fire. It's not water. It is a person. When you start relating with the person of the Holy Spirit, you start relating with the person of God's wisdom. It is the spirit of wisdom. And I know today you are going to have encounter with that spirit today in the name of Jesus Christ. It says, Hosea 5 verse 15, I will return again to my place till they acknowledge their offense. And then they will seek my face in their affliction and they will endlessly seek me. In other words, affliction and the Holy Spirit cannot dwell together. When you have the Holy Spirit, it will not allow affliction to be the last chapter of your life. The Holy Spirit is a force that works against affliction. And that is why if you have any affliction in your body right now, the Holy Spirit will begin to destroy that affliction by the root. I pray for you today. The Holy Ghost will destroy that affliction by the root. The Lord said to me, he has assigned a healing angel to work with me. He said, as I preach, that angel will walk. As I'm preaching right now, the healing angels of God, they are walking in your house. They are walking in your body. That healing angel is still as the water of the world, as we steer up the water of the world. Yes, anyone that jump inside is made all of their diseases. As we are steering the water with the word of God, the healing angels is going forth into many houses, is touching bodies, is touching life. Receive your healing right now. Receive your healing right now. Receive your healing right now. The Bible says, it said, they, then they will seek my face in their affliction. They will honestly seek me. They will seek my face in their affliction and they will honestly seek me. In other words, as we seek the Holy Spirit, every affliction in your body, as I am speaking right now, they have been uprooted. I say affliction in your body. They have been uprooted. They have been dismantled. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Ghost is bringing solution into your body right now. Receive your healing right now. Receive your healing right now. The wisdom of God that was at the beginning with God, the wisdom of God that was on this earth before the earth was created that wisdom we begin to create healing in your body we begin to bring light where there's darkness that holy ghost begin to move upon your life right now i pray for you receive the touch of the spirit of god in the name of jesus what are we saying therefore what we are saying is this the place of the holy spirit 
in the school of wisdom. The Holy Ghost is the fountain of wisdom. The Holy Spirit is the fountain of wisdom in the life of a believer. The Holy Ghost is the fountain of wisdom. In the, now, it was that wisdom that helped Adam in the, what, in the garden. It was one that helped Adam to name all the animals. It was the Holy Spirit that actually helped Adam to understand the heart of God. It was the Holy Spirit that helped Adam to understand the heart of God. Let me say to many of us that are listening tonight that wisdom is inside God's heart. I mean to say here, wisdom dwells in the heart of God. Please note this word I'm about to say. I am saying this word intentionally. Wisdom dwells in the heart of God. So to be wise, you must know God's heart. Mark that word. Wisdom dwells in the heart of God. Wisdom, it dwells inside the heart of God. So for me and you to be wise, we must know the heart of God. Now for you to know the heart of God, it is the Holy Spirit that will help you to know the heart of God. Because no man knoweth the spirit of a man except the spirit that dwells in him. No man know the things of God except the Holy Spirit that dwells in him. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 2. No man knows what is in the heart of a man except the spirit that is in that man. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. A man know nothing except the spirit of man that is in him. It also no man know the things of God except the spirit of God. God has things. The things of God, they are revealed by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is the fountain of wisdom. The Holy Ghost is the fountain of wisdom. In fact, we can call it the fountain of uncommon wisdom. The Holy Spirit is the fountain of uncommon wisdom. And that is why today, as we connect to the wisdom of God, as we connect to the Holy Spirit, you are connecting to the fountain of wisdom. And that is what we are saying here tonight, that the Holy Ghost is the fountain of wisdom. That is the Holy Spirit is the fountain of uncommon wisdom. And I will show you where it worked in the life of people. The Holy Spirit is the fountain of wisdom in the life of every believer. So when you have the Holy Spirit, you have a fountain. And that is why I pray for you today. That fountain of uncommon wisdom will begin to manifest in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. The fountain of uncommon wisdom will begin to manifest in your life in the name of Jesus. I pray for you again. The fountain of uncommon wisdom will begin to manifest in your life in the name of Jesus. Because I know that you cannot have access to this wisdom except you connect to the Holy Spirit. And that is why I've come to present him to you today as a person. You can talk with him. If you know that the Holy Spirit is a person, then you can talk with him. You can, you can, you can discuss with him. Many people don't relate with the Holy Spirit as a person. That is why they don't discuss their problem with him. 
you can discuss with the Holy Spirit because he's a person. He can hear, he has ears, he has eyes, he can see, he is a person. You don't have to have a body to be a person. You are a person, but you live in a body. The Holy Spirit is a body, is a person without a body, but it's a real person. The Holy Ghost can speak. The Holy Ghost can laugh. The Holy Ghost can feel. The Holy Ghost can hear. Let him that hears and hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. The Holy Ghost can hear, and that is why you can talk to him. You can engage with him. What, what the Holy Ghost, what Jesus was to the disciples when he was on this earth is what he is to us today. Let's see how this Holy Spirit manifested wisdom in the life of people that related to him. Let's see. Number one, Joseph was a very good example of the man that operated in the spirit of wisdom, uncommon wisdom, Genesis chapter Genesis that verse 40. Genesis 41, 38. Genesis 41, verse 38. It was wisdom that brought Adam out of the garden. That brought, that brought Joseph out of prison, I mean. Wisdom of God brought him out. Wisdom of God liberated him out. Wisdom of God established Joseph on his throne. Wisdom of God enhanced the fulfillment of prophecy. The dream that Joseph had when he was small that became a prime minister. It was the Holy Spirit through wisdom that made that possible. I pray for you today. Every positive prophecy that heaven has spoken concerning you, they shall come to pass by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's see here. See what Pharaoh said when they brought Joseph to him in the palace. And Joseph gave advice of what should be done about the dream. It was the Holy Spirit that helped Joseph to interpret the dream of Pharaoh. Without the Holy Spirit, your dream cannot be interpreted. It was the Holy Ghost that helped Joseph to interpret his dream and to interpret the dream of other people. But hear what Pharaoh said about Joseph when he had given the advice. Bible says in verse 37, the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and the eyes of his servant. Verse 38, and Pharaoh said to his servant, can we find such one as this, a man in whom the spirit of the Lord is? Can we find a man? Can we find a man as this? a man in whom the Holy Spirit is, not the Holy Spirit was, the Holy Spirit is present tense, present time, present tense Holy Ghost. That is the Holy Ghost is there at working with him, currency of the Spirit, not oh, uh, Can we find a man that used to have the Holy Spirit? The Holy uh, Pharaoh is a idol worshiper. Yet it could smell the Holy Spirit on, on Joseph. The way you smell Givenchy, the way you smell Georgia Armani, the way you smell perfume on people, that is how Joseph was smelling the Holy Ghost. So you can so be filled with the Holy Spirit that you start smelling the Holy Spirit. You start smelling the fragrance of the Spirit. When people come near you, they can smell, they can smell the Holy Ghost around you. And that is how they were able to smell Joseph. Can we find a man in whom the Holy Ghost is dwelling? What did the Holy Ghost do for him? He said, Pharaoh said to Joseph, inasmuch as God, the Spirit of God has shown you all this. There is no one as discerning and as wise as you are. You will be ruler over my house. By virtue of what the Holy Ghost showed to Joseph, he became a ruler. He became a ruler. And that is why I want to say to many of us here, by virtue of what 
God Holy Spirit revealed to Joseph, it became a ruler. So what happened? The Holy Spirit is the one that reveals the wisdom of God. The Holy Spirit is the one that reveals solutions to problems in your life. The Holy Ghost is the one that shows you the wisdom in the heart of God. The Holy Spirit is a revealer. The Holy Spirit is one that will show you the answer to the challenges you are facing. The Holy Spirit knows the answer to the challenges we are facing. He knows the future. He can interpret the dreams of our lives. And that is why I'm saying to many of us today that is listening to me, that I don't know what dream you have had that has not come to pass. That dream will come to pass as you ask for fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of wisdom will bring to pass in your life the dream of God for your life. It's as God, God has shown you all this. It is what God shows you that make you a show among men. It is what God revealed to you that will reveal it to your world. I want to say to many of us, there is no problem that does not have a solution with God. There is no problem that does not have a solution with God. Like I said, that we don't know it does not mean it does not exist. I said in the devotion this morning, I said we have come to a time in the history that the problem in a society are not going to be solved at the same level they are, they are created. I said that we are coming to a time in history that the problem we have in the society are not going to be solved at the same level they were created. In other words, it's going to take level two solution to solve level one problem. The Holy Spirit is the one that brings about that manifestation in our life. Whether you are in business or you are in education, in any career you find yourself, please understand it's time for believers to begin to manifest the wisdom of God, which will be the problem solver. We are not created to run from problems. Rather, we run to them because we have access to the answer to every problem in this world. How? Through the wisdom of God. To the wisdom of God, just like we saw in the life of Joseph, that it was the wisdom of God that revealed to him the economic solution to what is about to happen in the future in Egypt. Every challenge and battle that we are you are facing right now require godly wisdom to overcome it. And that is why I'm saying to many of us that are here that God's wisdom is shown to be true by result. And we saw what happened. Many of us that are here right now, we are going to be tapping to the wisdom of God by the spirit of God. If you know how to tap into God's wisdom, you will find answer to every challenge or problem you have ever encountered. Whether it's operating in your business, or in your in your in the work you are doing, or in the locality or the state of government, or managing your personal affair, remember that the wisdom of God is the word of God that is found in the Holy Spirit. Just Pharaoh said, Can we find a man in whom the Holy Ghost is as much as God has shown you all this? There's no one that will may appoint over this matter. What does that mean? What is wisdom? Wisdom is God showing you his ways of solving problems. A God showing you the revealed ways of God in solving a problem. In other words, a wisdom mean is God showing you answer to a question of life. As much as God has shown you all this, there's no one as discreet and discerning as you are. So you are only going to be wise to the level to which God show you. There is wisdom in this book. Wisdom is hidden here. Wisdom is hidden. 
Wisdom is packaged in a mystery. That wisdom that has been ordained for our glory is packaged in a mystery. It's hidden. It has to be revealed. Now the Bible says that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither entered out of any man what God has in store for those that love him. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. So the Holy Spirit is a revealer. The Holy Ghost is a revealer. He revealed the secret of Pharaoh's dream to Joseph. And that revelation revealed the destiny of Joseph. That revelation re 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 revealed. I want to be sure. Is everybody hearing me? Please, if you are hearing me, let me know, please. Everybody. So I'm hearing, I'm seeing a text message. Some say they are not hearing me. Please, if you are hearing me, let me know, please. Can you type? Uh, if you are hearing me, let me know, please. Uh, Dickness Priscilla, are you hearing me where you are? Um, Minister Celia, are you hearing me? Please let me know. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor, yes, Pastor, you are hearing now. Thank you, thank you. Now, I want to say to many of us that are here, the same Holy Spirit, that revealed the answer. Thank you, Minister Celia. Thank you for hearing. If you put on, if you put on Zoom and Facebook together, they may you may have problem in hearing. So either you are on Zoom or you are on Facebook, make it one to be easier for you. As I begin to round up, thank you very much, Dickness Ann. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me say to many of us here, just the way that the Holy Spirit revealed the secret of Pharaoh's dream to Joseph. And that revealed the prime minister in him. I pray for everyone listening to me today that the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal secret to you that will establish you in your place of destiny in Jesus' name. It was the Holy Ghost that gave Joseph his place in Egypt. It was the Holy Ghost that gave Daniel his place in Babylon. The Holy Ghost will give you your place in the midst of this pandemic. I pray for you today. You can shout amen like thunder. The Holy Ghost will reveal secret to you that will establish you in your place of glory and honor this year in Jesus name. You can shout amen like thunder. I pray for you, the spirit of God that reveal the secret of Pharaoh's dream to Joseph and that thing that Joseph showed the king also showed the prime minister him. I pray for you that you will become a solution provider in the city where you are in Jesus name. What God revealed to Joseph, make him a ruler in Egypt. He became a ruler by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost made Joseph a ruler through the wisdom of God. In other words, you are not going to sit down on the throne that God asked for you this year without the Holy Spirit, without the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. So wherever you are, please understand, wisdom and the Holy Ghost go together. Look at Daniel in Daniel chapter chapter five from verse eleven to twelve. He said, "There's a man in your kingdom." He said, "The spirit of the Holy Ghost are in him." Anywhere you find this Holy Spirit at work, you find light, you find solution. I pray for somebody here that by the operation of the Holy Spirit, I see answers coming through you in the name of Jesus Christ. The fountain of wisdom on your inside we break loose in the name of Jesus. The fountain of wisdom will break loose. The fountain of wisdom will give you answer to that marital challenge you are facing. It will give you answer to that challenge you have in your head. It will give you answer to the challenge you have over children. It will give you answer. It will touch what you cannot touch. It will go to where you cannot go. The Bible talks about Daniel 5, 11. It says, a man in your kingdom in whom the spirit of the Holy God in the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of God was found in him, in as much as the excellent spirit was in him, interpreting dreams. See what that spirit will do. It can interpret your dreams. What the Holy Ghost will do in your life, 
through wisdom, it will interpret dreams. The Holy Ghost will interpret knowledge, interpret dream and solve riddles, explaining enigma. This is what that spirit will do. The Holy Spirit on your inside. Daniel 5, 11 to 5, it will solve problem. It will dissolve difficulty. It will deal with reduce. It will interpret your dreams. I pray for you today. Every dream that is in your heart, every dream that is upon your life, every destiny that you carry by the power of the Holy Ghost, it shall be interpreted. Your dream will be interpreted. You will not die with your dream. In the name of Jesus, that your dream, not by power, not by might, that dream will come to pass in the name of Jesus. The way the dream of Daniel came to pass, the, the, the dream of the king was revealed to Daniel. The dream of Pharaoh was revealed to Joseph. I pray for you the secret that will establish you this year of pandemic by the Holy Ghost. I pray it shall be revealed to you in Jesus' name. I pray it shall be revealed to you in Jesus' name. May that spirit rest upon you. They call it in Isaiah 11, verse 1. It said, The Spirit of God will rest upon you. A, 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 a spirit. Bible says, We come out of Jesse. A stem will come out of Jesse. A rod will come out of Jesse. From the stem of Jesse. And the branch will grow out of it. And the Spirit of God will rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom. I pray for somebody here. The spirit of wisdom will rest upon you. The spirit of wisdom will rest upon you in the name of Jesus. I pray for you today. The spirit of wisdom will rest upon you. That spirit rested upon the rod of the rod that came out of the stem of Jesse. That is talking about Jesus. It's a rod. The rod is the word that rests upon. I pray for you. The spirit of God will rest upon you and begin to arrest every restlessness in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're not talking about here, we're not talking about the gift of wisdom. We're talking about the mantle. Now, the gift that we saw in First Corinthians chapter, chapter 12, that is word of knowledge, word of wisdom, that is a word. But when it comes to this, the spirit of wisdom is a mantle. There's seven mantle: the mantle of wisdom, the mantle of knowledge, the mantle of counsel, the mantle of might the mantle of knowledge, the mantle of the fear of God. Let me tell you, out of this seven spirit of God, five of it has to do with wisdom. Knowledge has to do with wisdom. Understanding has to do with wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Counsel is of wisdom. So you have, for wisdom is five all over seven times 100. Holy Ghost is 71.5. Holy Ghost is 71.5 wisdom. The Holy Ghost is more of wisdom than power. The Holy Ghost is more of wisdom than power. So the more of the spirit you have, the more of the fountain of the spirit that you have in your life. I pray for you, your fountain will not dry up. Your fountain will not dry up. As we round up the service today, that's why when they were praying for people in the scriptures, in Acts chapter, chapter, chapter 6, they said, that they said, give us men that are full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. That is Acts chapter 6, verse 4. They said, the anointed deacons that were full, look at what the Bible says here. Acts chapter 6. Acts 6, the Bible says that in verse 5, the, the same placed the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and all this, all the deacons that they mentioned here. And the Bible makes it very clear uh, in this place that these men, they were full. Look at what the Bible says here, verse 3. Acts 6 verse 3. Therefore, brethren, seek out among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Acts 6 verse 3. Men full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Men full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. When you are full of the Holy Ghost, you'll be full of wisdom. 
so the wisdom of God is a measure whom we may appoint over this business. The spirit of God is the spirit of wisdom. That's what we are saying here. It's a lookout for men that are full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. So wherever you find the Holy Spirit, you find the wisdom of God. So today I'm praying for you that the fountain of the Holy Ghost will break loose in your life. I pray for you by this service, the fountain of the Holy Ghost will break loose in your life. The fountain of the Spirit of God, the fountain of uncommon wisdom, the, pro, the, the wisdom that overturned mountain by the root. Every mountain you are facing has an unseen path. As an unseen path. It has a path you cannot see. Every mountain has a root. There's a spirit behind every problem you are facing. And that is why it said when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of God will lift a standard to overturn it, overturn it, overturn it. I pray for you today. Every spirit behind your challenges, by the Holy Ghost today, it is overturned. I pray for you. Every spirit that is behind the challenges you are facing, I say those spirits that are sent from the pit of hell, they are overturned. The way the rod of Moses swallow up the rod of magician, that is how the Holy Ghost will swallow up that challenge. That is how the Holy Ghost will swallow up that challenge. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you today that the fountain of the Holy Ghost will break loose in your life and begin to deliver you from every unclean spirit. And Matthew chapter 10 verse, verse 1, as I ran up, it said Jesus gave them power against unclean spirit to cast them out. Every Everything working against us by the power of God, the Holy Ghost work against them. In the name of Jesus Christ, power against, power against, power against, every power against you, power against, by the Holy Ghost, I pray today, by the Holy Ghost, everything working against you shall be swallowed up, they shall be swallowed up, it shall be overturned, it shall be overturned, it shall be overturned, in the name of Jesus, the Lord will lift a standard against every spirit working against you, remember, wherever you find the Holy Spirit, evil spirit cannot survive. Wherever you find the Holy Spirit, evil spirit cannot survive there. In First Samuel, we saw that we saw here that in First Samuel, in First Samuel chapter sixteen, in First Samuel sixteen, the Bible says fourteen. The spirit of God departed from Saul, and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. The spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and this a distressing spirit troubled him. So the Holy Spirit is your greatest defense against evil spirits. You cannot be full of the Holy Ghost and be full of evil spirits. That is why the Holy Spirit is your greatest defense against evil spirits. So today I pray for you that every activity of unclean spirit in your life is hereby terminated. He said, the spirit departed from Saul, the Holy Ghost departed from him, and a distressing spirit troubled him. So behind the trouble of Saul was a distressing spirit. The Holy Ghost is the answer to distressing spirit. And I pray for everyone listening to me today. Every distressing spirit that have been sent to trouble you, by the power of the Holy Spirit. That distressing spirit is cast out now in Jesus' name. How do you work with the Holy Spirit? Number one, you must be born again. If you are not born again, the Holy Spirit cannot come inside you. The outpouring of, this, of the blood precedes the outpouring of the Spirit. You must be born again. You must give your life to Jesus. If you are not born again, the Holy Spirit cannot come in. The blood must wash your heart for the Spirit to come. Then seek baptism in the Holy Spirit. Seek baptism of the Holy Spirit because when you are born again, you have a well level, a well level of the Spirit. That is John chapter 4, verse 14. When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have the river level of the Spirit. And when you are anointed, you have the rain level of the Spirit. So it's in measures, it's in measures. The Spirit of God is a measure, but you must be born again first. 
as you get born again, you have the well level of the spirit. Then when you are when you have baptized Holy Ghost, you have the river level of the spirit. Then you have the anointing level, which is the shower level. And that is why I want to say to many of you also to operate. You have only if you also are baptized Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Holy Spirit. It releases the hidden mysteries. Remember, the Holy Ghost assignment is to reveal the the. The hidden mysteries, the hidden answers, the wisdom to solve the problem we are facing is there within our spirit. It's a force in our spirit. But when we pray in the spirit, it is revealed to you. So when you pray in the spirit, you are praying, you are praying to release mysteries. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse, verse, verse 1 to 2. It's when you are praying the Holy Ghost, you are revealing mysteries. And mysteries, they are hidden secrets. And so when we are praying the Holy Ghost, over this matter, Holy Spirit, give me an answer. You know what you are doing? You are digging out mysteries. He say, I will be it. He that pray in an unknown tongue, speaking not to men, but to God. Bible says, for that in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. What is mystery? Hidden secrets. Hidden secrets. First Corinthians 14, verse 2. When you are praying the Holy Ghost, you are making demand for your spirit to be able to pick what is in the mind of the spirit. That is how you tap into the wisdom of God. When you pray in the spirit, you tap into the wisdom of God. When you pray in the spirit, you tap into the wisdom of God. You, you tap into the uh, solution providing spirit of God as you pray in the spirit. That is why I want to encourage you in this night that you pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit this month. It's a month of wisdom. The Bible says, he that is wise, treasure knowledge. Also go for knowledge. This will help you to be able to keep the operation of the spirit. I want to round up tonight by bringing out this communion. If you are there, please bring out your communion. As you partake of this, your eyes will be open. This will open your eyes. As you partake of this communion, your eyes will be open. So this is an eye-opening force. This, the blood and the, and the spirit, they work together. There are three things that bear witness on the earth. First John 5, 7, the water, the blood, and the spirit. Three things bear witness on the earth. The water... the word and the blood. So they agree. Anywhere you find the blood, you find the Holy Spirit. As you partake of this, I see the Holy Spirit begin to walk in your life. So if you are there, bring out your communion, please. As we partake of this, any challenge you are having, we stand by the blood, we stand by his word. And I believe by this, this will be a witness. This will begin to manifest in your life. Open your eyes to see hidden mysteries. Open your ears to hear. And by this, every sickness in your body, I command them terminated in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you. For everyone that partake of this communion, every sickness in your body, place your hand there. Every sickness in your body, I pray for you right now, be healed in Jesus' name. Every sickness, every challenge in your body, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed now in the name of Jesus. If you cannot see, begin to see. Cannot what begin to walk. If you cannot begin to move, receive your miracle healing. Receive your miracle healing in the name of Jesus. Somebody receiving healing in your right eyes. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want to thank every one of you joining us tonight. I appreciate every one of you as you have joined us. I pray that the hand of God will rest over you tonight so that you have testimony. 
our special testimony at the beginning of the broadcast, Rachel, that the husband we prayed for last week has been released out of the hospital from COVID-19. And they are getting him now to get him out of the hospital. God has answered our prayer over that family. COVID related and God healed him and is getting out of the hospital right now. The wife shared testimony on the platform here with us on Facebook Live. So all of you that are listening to me, I'm going to hear your testimony. I will hear your testimony. This month is your month of testimony. It's your month of testimony. Testimony is coming for you. Before I meet you here on Sunday, we are coming here on Sunday uh, for prophetic service. The mystery of wisdom that works, hear me very well. You are going to have testimony to share with me in the name of Jesus Christ. So please help me share this message. Help me share with somebody. I want to thank all the members of, of Destiny Church, London, and Washington, D.C. Please, I want you to know the power of God and all our people around the world, all our Facebook family. I want to celebrate all of you. And we have so many people of us that are on the line here today. There are so many here. I won't be able to read all the names, but I want to appreciate all of you that are on the line. I celebrate you. I celebrate you. I won't be able to go through all the line because of our time. Um, but I want to appreciate every one of you that have been with us. I'm going to surely hear your testimony. Just the way we had the testimony of Sister Rachel today, McFarlane, that the husband is out of the hospital, is get is out of the place where he is. They moved him out. Now they're going to get him out to release him out of the hospital. That is how your miracle will be released. That is how your miracle will be released. Every power contending with the agenda of God for your life, they are going to scatter in Jesus' name. Every power that is fighting you, fighting you over your destiny, today they lose control over your life. Today they lose control over your life. I will contend with him that contend with you, and I will save your children. So shall it be for you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I want to thank you, all of you that are listening to me right now. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to hear your testimony. Help me share this message. Please share this button. Share it, share it, share it. Press your share button. Let somebody hear this message. And go to our YouTube page, Destiny Monday TV, and listen to the message there. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday, 11 p.m., 11.30 a.m., in the from Facebook, 10:30 in the in the in the morning, and we also have Sunday school for those that want to bring their children for Sunday school. We have that uh, coordinated by Sister, uh, Sister Debbie and the Kness Anne working together to get that done. You can connect with those services, and on Sunday we have our US Church and uh, London Youth Service 4:30 p.m. Wonderful things, and 7 p.m. on Zoom in the evening, and 8 p.m. on Sunday full and outreach in the afternoon. It's a full scale day serving the Lord. And I know the Lord will bless you as you do so in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Love you all. See you on, uh, on Sunday. I look forward to hear your testimony. Bye-bye. Today that will last you a lifetime. They must be born again. You must be born again.